This is the second part of my story. My grandfather sold radios, and so we always had a radio in our home. But nobody else in the village had a radio. And so when the hockey games came on, um, all the young fellows from down in the village would come up to our place, sit around the radio and, and listen to the hockey games. And I can remember the night that they had the longest hockey game. That was in 1933. And the hockey game went on until 2 o'clock in the morning. I think it's the longest one on record. And it went on until 2 o'clock in the morning. And I remember one of the names of one of the players was Charlie Conacher. And Doherty, I think his name was. And Foster Hewitt was the announcer. Some of the places I worked in the summers when I lived in Brighton, um, the Canada Rex Spray, it made ant traps, and I worked there one summer. Uh, Cooey's, who made, uh, that was in the 1950s, and they were making all those card table sets. And um, then I worked in some of the grocery stores. There were some funny little things happened in the grocery store. Um, this lady came in one day and she wanted some onions and I said there they are over there on the on the floor and she picked it up and she said are these they and I thought that was the funny sounding sentence but her question but it was proper grammar are these they <clears throat> not in quite a stickler for grammar people would order their groceries we'd make them up in the store and then somebody with the bicycle, a young fellow with the bicycle and a carrier on the front would come to the store, get a box of groceries, put it in the bicycle and deliver it, bring the money back and we'd have to mark it paid and so on and so forth. Another way that they shopped, I don't know why, but they came in and stood at the counter and would tell me the things that they had on their list and I would go and get it come back. Then they tell me something else and it might have been right beside what they just told me to pick up. And I could never understand why they didn't go and get it themselves. Um, it would have saved me a lot of trips. But anyway, when they brought it back, I had to write it on a list, um, put the price beside it, and then you added it all up manually. We had no adding machines then. <clears throat> we added it all up manually. When I worked at the uh, pea viner, um, the, pea, the loads of peas used to come past us, and we'd run out and grab a big handful of pea vines, and then we'd go sit someplace and, and take off the pods and eat the peas. And I was telling that to my son one day, and he said, Mom, you told us we weren't supposed to steal. That's stealing. <laughs> and at the pea viner out at Hilton, we had to record the when the farmers came in with their load of peas, we had to um, weigh the load. And then when, you, when it was empty, then you subtracted the weight of the wagon off and we kept a record of the weight of peas that came from their load. And they didn't get paid until the end of the, the season, so it was very important that we kept good records for them. The farmers had a contract with the, with the company, and they would bring their loads of tomatoes into the factory. Then inside the factory, the tomatoes all got scalded. There were women worked around a conveyor belt. They would be given uh, dish pan, big dish pans full of scalded tomatoes. If they got one big pail of tomatoes from two big dish pans full, then they got paid a certain amount. But if they could get more than one pail out of two pans full of scalded tomatoes, then they got more money. And it was recorded on a little card up in front of each of them. Peeled tomatoes would travel by conveyor belt past the sorting table and the cans would be filled and then that was one of my jobs was to send the cans the empty cans you took them out of and turned them onto a conveyor belt and they were taken down 
down below and filled with peeled tomatoes. As they were filled with uh, peeled tomatoes, I had to put a little ball of salt in each can as it went past me. <laughs> and uh, then they'd, they'd go, um, these filled cans would go and be capped and cooked and cooled and stored. And then in the winter time, when the orders were coming in from different places, they would call in a crew to, to label the cans and, and ship them out. And um, those labels were kept in a building in, uh, in Brighton. And I think that the renegade in Brighton is where the labels, I think, were stored. And um, they were put on each can according to, to what company. And some of those labels were done, so we heard, were done by uh, the artists, the group of seven artists. I, I'd like to get hold of some sometime and <laughs> check it out because they really were beautiful. I attended Peterborough Teachers College and then the next year I got a job as the, as the teacher at a rural school in Wicklow and that's a little place between Colburn and Grafton. And uh, we had no running water, we had um, a box stove in the middle of the room um, and we had to keep that thing going and I didn't know anything about keeping a fire going and so I was thankful for the old, <laughs> some of the older boys <laughs> that I had. Um, I had from grade one to grade seven, a few in each class and uh, we carried water from the neighbors by the pail. The inspector came one day with a major young from the Department of Education. What they wanted to um, show the rural school teachers was that um, things could be done in the rural schools the same as in the town schools. And so he, this major young worked with my kids and tried to fool them and did all kinds of things with them. And later on he came I got word that he was impressed with how alert the kids were and how well they did their exercises. And he said, there's a fund called the Lord Strathcona Trust Fund and uh, we want to do a film and do it in your school. And so they came with their Crowley films from Ottawa, came with their big um, lights and, and filmed two, an indoor film and what you could do with it in an outdoor film. Now we will have our physical education lesson. When we come to the team activities, the senior boys and the senior girls will do skipping and tumbling. The junior boys and the junior girls will do ball handling and balancing exercises. Ready? Stand. Desk to the wall, move. So they came and filmed that, and during the filming, um, we were supposed to wear the same clothes all the time. And anyway, this one little girl, her mother said, oh, she's so sick and tired of wearing that little blue dress, but I got another little blue dress that I could put on her today. Would that be all right? I said, oh, sure. They're not likely even going to film her today anyway. Anyway, when the film was produced, Anna started at one end of the balancing beam in one blue dress, and by the time she got to the other end of the balance beam, she had on a different dress. <laughs> when we were in high school, one of the programs was uh, the cadet program. And uh, so we were, um, the boys had, I think, three platoons, and the girls only had one, but we, learned to march and, and uh, I think it was probably a discipline thing. And we had uh, fellows from the army come and inspect us and so on and so forth. That you know, it was sort of more like a reserve type thing, but, not, but it was a school program. We all borrowed red blazers if we didn't have one. And that was our uniform. This is the Brighton I remember. <laughs>